how to make the most out of the first week of November. We're talking with Steve Hansen. He shares some key insights to get the most out of this week. Here we go. Any specific advice um, for early November that you think or what you have seen to be mo- in a most effective effective strategy for you know, shooting mature bucks too not, yeah for right yeah. For, for hunting and and you know harvesting mature bucks i mean the biggest one in that early november time is to recognize when scrapes are no longer important i think a lot of people hunt scrapes longer into november uh-huh. than they really should and then that first two th- you know november second third four something in there rattling is still highly effective mm-hmm. i would i would recommend that you know i'd say when they stop really hitting the scrapes you probably still rattling still going to be effective for three or four days you know it seems like they're still on that before they go into full chase mode so, so. and so break down what a setup would look like for that for the november 2nd 3rd or 4th with rattling it uh, morning evening are you set up let's let's break down the morning then let's break down an evening okay set. so in the morning what does that look like yeah like in the morning you know you're going to be more likely in the timber either you know, really close to where you know they're bedding, you know, obviously downwind of it or in some type of a funnel leading to it. And if you're going to employ rattling as part of that strategy, try to hunt a stand or have a stand that has a significant terrain advantage, you know, something that they can't get downwind of you. Like that pond. The the pond. Like that pond. Yep, exactly. You know, having a setup like that's going to be a strong, you know, a strong rattling setup. That's what you want to look for where they can't get downwind of you and, and, and pick you off. So mm-hmm. that would be the, you know, the most important. Um, and are you rattling at hour after uh, sunrise or are you wait until like 8 or 9 o'clock no, in the morning? I, no, my, my strategy has always been different on rattling like that. As soon as it's light enough that you can glass around and make sure there's nothing close enough to pick off your movement, I, that's when I would rattle. That's when everything in the woods can hear, everything mm-hmm. in the woods knows, you know, that's when they're – they're the most attuned to their environment. The wind hasn't usually picked up by then. It's cooler yet. Mm-hmm. I would recommend, you know, a strong rattling sequence right at first light. Then I'd probably let the morning play out. And then maybe, you know, two other sets throughout the morning, an hour, hour and a half apart. How so long of a sequence do you not suggest? Not typically very long, five to ten seconds. Uh-huh. You know, Just something. Sh- yep, sh- yep. And then stop and then a little bit and then put them away. Uh-huh. So. That's uh, And then that would lead to another thing. You know, we've had a lot of people, you try to coach someone on this. If they haven't seen it work, and most people from other places haven't. I've never had six. Right. I've never, I think I've never, I mean, I've rattled in like three-year-olds. Sure. I've never rattled in a mature bird. Right. And that's what, you know, a lot of people do that. Then they're standing there, still have their antlers in their hand. Put those and all the, up. Yeah, put them up and be ready. Not, you don't have to clip your release on, but you want to be ready because, you know, they have an uncanny ability of knowing exactly where that sound came from. Yeah. And they can be at 15 yards and they're looking for you. You won't be able to do much at that point because you're, pinned, and then, you're like, pinned yeah. and then you've missed your opportunity. Okay. So. That's a, so rattle, grab your bow. Yep. Grab your bow, at least be ready so that, you know, you're not, you don't have to, you know, get something out of your pack or, uh-huh. you know, hang people always just don't have a place to hang their antlers yep. and that's the other thing i if you're going to employ rattling i'd put an extra bow hook in yep. so when you rattle you can hang them up kind of quickly they're right there they're not in your way and and just be ready to go so man i'm getting excited yeah <laughs> no, i know i know it about is this so <laughs> it's a good thing elk hunting is september <laughs> yeah, otherwise no. it'd really be tough <laughs> yeah, no kid okay so that second third fourth and then for the evening hunts i assume are you downwind of a uh, primary food source yeah you know that that's kind of the time time of year when we transition away from food plots but those days there we st- still probably would be field edge or close to field edge hunting on the you know, on or close to the food sources. Mm -hmm. Um, What's going to happen is once you get, you know, into that fifth, six, something in there, once they really start chasing, those does do not want to go to the food plots. They are going to get harassed. harassed, And that's not the time to be sitting on the the field edge. So it's important to try to pay attention to what phase the rut's in and, and know what you're, you know, make sure you're not sitting... And it bothers a lot of times guys like, well, aren't you guys, we, you got all these food plots. Or can we hunt the food plots? I'm like, no, we don't want to go there at all. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not very long. You know, it, it'd be a week, maybe maybe a week, eight or nine days, and then those does will go back to feeding and as we get in the later part of the rut. Mm-hmm. But but there is a good week to ten days where that's not the place to be. So, and where do you need to be in those evenings then? Well, it, morning once it gets into that phase, morning or night, just hard rut funnels, just, okay. big time terrain funnels. That's yep. going to be because it, at that point it's almost just a function of putting in the most time in the biggest best funnel mm-hmm. and and a place when you pick a spot for the those days of the rut, I'm going to say the 
fifth, sixth, up until whenever lockdown occurs, your true rut funnel spots. You know, I'd pick a spot. You you know when you get in them, but it, it's make sure it's a spot where you feel you'll you can have an opportunity. Like if it's awkward and you think, well, they'd have to stop right there or right there. That's like not the spot. Yeah, yeah, too tight of windows. You know, not pruned out well enough. That time of year, they're going to be moving. They're not going to follow any one specific. Reality. Yeah, you want to be able to you know have a good air, good areas to shoot for sure. Mm -hmm. So, not really constricted. Mm -hmm. Like early season on a food plot, you could have real tight cover, small windows shoot. They're going to come and feed. You'll probably get an opportunity during the rut. They're going to be moving fast. They're not going to stop where you want them. You know, you want you want a good lot of open shooting lanes. That's so. a good piece of advice. I think a lot of people have probably cost themselves opportunity where they yes. picked the right spot, but it wasn't trimmed out. It well wasn't enough. trimmed yeah. out well enough, or they were overly overly worried about cover and and not shooting at that time of year. I would worry more about the ability to shoot, less about the cover. Okay. So yeah, that's good advice.